sassy sleuths, Evie Bug here, and welcome to another episode inside of Nancy Drew, Legend of the Crystal Skull. Where we left off, we were just finishing this clock puzzle where we got three eyeballs, and now we're going to work on some more puzzles. So we only need two more eyeballs, which is pretty crazy. Um, so let's see, we did Time Will Tell. Um, did we do a librarian's tale? What's that? Let's see, a great keeper of books. It's true, am I? Many a reader through me can spy. Oh, on wondrous worlds that will never die, you could say it's magic, the librarian's eye. But to get such an eye, you must first take a look at the cards that keep track of every book. The titles, the thing, additions, the hook, that will let you remove the orb from its nook. The only thing I can think of is we saw something that said Librarian's Tale over here. A Librarian's Tale? Hmm, something Bruno Bollet wrote in that Tired Eyes book mentioned the Librarian's Eye. Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know what that means. But, anyway, we will look um, at the other ones because I'm not really sure what to do about that one. Um, let's see, so let's look at um, the history of Quincy T. Booker's teeth. Okay. So let's see, primary teeth. Filled upper right second molar, extracted upper right central incisor, then upper left cent er sorry, upper right central incisor, then upper left central incisor. Filled lower left lateral incisor. Permanent teeth. Extracted lower right canine, extracted upper left first bicuspid, extracted lower left canine, extracted lower left third molar. Okay. So I saw a little diagram thing of teeth upstairs, and so we're going to go take a look at that. Now the librarian's eye, that's not talking about this, was it? Because we did get something from that. I don't know, I guess we'll have to figure it out. Okay, so let's see, where was that? Up, oh, right here. Okay, so I'm going to figure this out and then we will be right back. Okay, everybody, we are back. So we have to start with the primary teeth, which would be the baby teeth. And I believe it should be one, two, three, four. Did that work? I have no idea. Okay, then for the permanent teeth should be one, two, three, four. <gasps> we did it! Sweet! Okay, so now we just have to figure out that librarian's tail. Um... Are there any books called Librarian's Tale? Here we go. A Librarian's Tale. Okay. Oh, it's got a combination on it. Hmm. Okay. What else can we get from... Wait a second. Camel Needle's Eye, 608. Cat's Eye, 1... Or, 010. Um, eye Candy, 004. Fake eyes, turn a blind eye. Okay, so I'm going to go through and find all of the cards that have to do with an eye and add up all these numbers and see if that gets us our number. Okay, everybody, I've added them all up, and it should be 1, 5, 4, 0. We did it! Oh, that's the last eyeball! Oh my goodness, I am so excited right now. Here, let's talk to Henry yes. real quick. Oh, I'm he's not as excited as we are because he doesn't Sounds know that we good. just found the last eyeball. I'm so excited. So incredibly excited. Okay, um, let's see. Hello again. Hello. I better get going. Fare the well. Fare the well. Okay. So, what do we do now? I'm not really sure. Okay, well, um, let's go here. 
Okay. Um. So. Nothing happened when we put them all in there. Let's see. Plentiful pirates and nautical nonsense. Maybe we have to look at that. Okay. Stealthily stalking them, famished and anxious. Out hunting west waters, he was cantankerous. Out here were the sea-stricken pirates aplenty. A week's worth of looting left their large stomachs empty. Down to the port will plunder some dinner. But the truth is that these pirates could, could have been thinner. Their villainous vessel was bogged down by booty. They would drop off the treasure and away they'd be scooting. They would foul up the village and make a great mess. Down to the mangroves they'd surely digress. Oh, it's the beastie. Swim for your lies. The calm sea's treachery left a surprise. A long-legged beastie whose eyes were aglow had spotted some treasure in the hold down below, and his cur curious nature could not let it go. So he tore down the hull, and alarmed were the pirates when he started breaking down or sorry, when he started to break down the structure inside it. His nautical naughtiness knocked down the ship. Those petrified pirates were muddled and miffed, so they fired their guns at their grand octopus, at one leg, at two legs, at left legs, then six. But the creature continued with two other arms. The northwestern water wailed in with alarm. The pirates abandoned this nautical nonsense and swam right to shore with their rather large haunches, but gaggles of gunmen got left getting gobbled. The creature was angry, in its own ink it bobbled. So down dove the octopus right to his den, he spit out their bones and fan fashioned a fence, and each treasure of course he had not left behind, he'd befriended all these baubles in every short time. And long lived this octopus hidden away, but his fate fell quite quickly on one fateful day. Okay, so if you noticed as I was reading that, there are a lot of words like left, north, west, right, down, up. So I think that that is the direction that we're supposed to turn these eyeballs. So at first it goes up, down, right, then left. So, I guess we should have to figure out what position we have to put these in. Okay, everybody, I wrote down all the north, south, west, east, left, right, up, downs uh, from the note, or from the um, book into my notes. And so now we should be able to just follow that and get this finished. So, we've got south, west, south, east, left, down, down, up, down, east, east, left, east, down, 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 left, then north, west, then right, left, down, right, left. <gasps> oh my gosh, it did it. Oh my gosh, what? <gasps> what is this? Oh my goodness, what is this? What? Do we have to build something? Oh my dear. Okay, guys, I think we are getting very close to the end. We may finish this today. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, okay, wait, how do we get out of here? Okay. Okay, um, okay. So, we have to figure out where we need to build this thing. Um, so the base of it is this thing that we grabbed. You know, I just have the sneaking suspicion that we have to do something around Bruno Bolle's grave over here. That looks right to me. Okay. Okay, let's build it. Oh my goodness, you guys. This is so crazy right now. Okay, so then the hand. 
Go, oh my gosh. And then now we just need the little eyeball thing. Oh dear. Oh dear. This is so creepy. Okay, where's the eyeball thing? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh dear, you guys. Oh no. Oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? Oh my goodness. And no one notices this? What's going on? Shot like electricity? Is this the skull? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Do we just take it? Is something gonna happen now that we took it? Oh no. How do we get out? Nancy? That you in there? Yes. Goodness sakes, gal, what on earth have you gone and done? The lid's closing and I don't know how to stop it. Here, I'll pull you up. Toss what you're holding up here, then give me your hands. Come on, you best hurry. Here it comes. <gasps> what, Nancy? That's not smart at all. Renee, a little help, please? The crystal skull. After all that scheming, how do I finally get it? Why, this nice little Yankee girl just hands it to me. Renee, help me. Hurry, please. Thank you, Nancy. Bye now. What? No, you've got to help me. Renee! Renee! Well, that was not smart, Nancy Drew. Why'd you hand it to her? Okay, what is this all about? Okay, what is this? Oh. Oh, is this a memory puzzle? Okay. I can't see anything, though. That makes it kind of difficult. Um... What else do we have here? I think we're, we're kind of getting it. Okay, we're doing it. We're doing this. We can do this. Then we've got to go catch Renee because she's running off with our crystal skull. Well, it's not really ours. I think it belongs to Bruno. Or not Bruno, sorry. Um, Henry, his kid. Or his... Ah! His great nephew or however that goes. I'm just messing it all up. Okay. Renee, we're coming to get you. Oh wait, look, there's footprints. Okay. Where's she going? <gasps> Sound of boat engine. Wait a second. I know where that is. Oh, which way is it though? <gasps> we made it. We made it. Renee, hold it right there. That skull isn't yours. This ain't nothing of the fact that you just tried to bury me alive. The skull is mine. It wants to be mine. Yes, I did my share of scheming to get it. I got Dr. Beaulieu to go to the authenticators, then switched the letter they wrote saying it was real with one I wrote saying it was fake in hopes that Dr. Beaulieu would just hand it over to me. Yes, my plan failed, and yet, here we are. I have the skull. Why? Because it knows that I will fulfill its destiny. Bruno Beaulieu wanted Henry to have it. That's why he had Gilbert Buford steal that painting and hide it in Henry's parents' crypt. Because he hoped that way Henry would eventually find it. Henry is a fool. If he ever got his hands on this, he would just turn around and give it to that trashy girlfriend of his. Dr. Bollet, he just wanted it because he was terrified of dying. Gilbert Buford, too. And that Lamont fella, he just wants to sell it to the highest bidder. But me, my motives are pure. I am going to so it can rendezvous with all those other skulls. I'm gonna be right there when they start conversing and all the mysteries of the universe are forever solved.
Renee burst into tears and sobbed as Bernie swam away with a crystal skull. It made me feel sorry for her for about two seconds. After all, while she may not have meant to cause Bruno's death, she certainly meant to cause mine when she left me sealed up in that crypt. It felt good to turn her over to the police. Later that night, Dr. Buford came over and apologized for knocking me out with that smoke bomb and for allowing himself to think, even for a moment, that Bruno's crystal skull was anything more than a pretty piece of quartz. To make up for his shameful behavior, he insisted on taking Bess and me on a grand tour of New Orleans. Seeing the city through the eyes of someone who loves it as much as Dr. Buford was truly special. He invited Henry, too, but Henry declined. He was still trying to process the fact that his great uncle wanted him to have the skull. Henry always thought that to Bruno, he was nothing more than an annoying family obligation, someone Bruno couldn't care less about. Yet Bruno's request of Dr. Buford, made with his dying breath, proved that he did care about Henry. Apparently, and unfortunately for Henry, Bruno was the type of man who just couldn't bring himself to say such things out loud. As for Lamont, when he heard what happened, he closed his shop, bought enough marshmallows to fill a swamp boat, and has been scouring the bayous ever since, kicking every log he comes to in hopes of finding Bernie and the crystal skull inside him. But Bernie has yet to turn up. Maybe the skull didn't agree with him. Maybe swallowing it caused him to stop associating the sound of a kicked log with yummy sweet things. In any case, the whisperer has disappeared, lost to the world once again, which is totally fine by me. Okay, what was Bernie's favorite food? Well, they just said it. It was marshmallows. Talk about a detective's dream come true. The Italian police called me personally and requested that I travel to Italy and help them stake out a suspected thief in Venice. Unfortunately, what started out as a simple assignment in a city filled with canals, gondolas, and romance quickly morphed into a full-fledged undercover operation. And I soon found myself trapped in a maze of lies, disguises, and danger. Help me find my way out by joining me in my next adventure. Phantom of Venice. Unfortunately, that's all time we have for this series. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. I do hope that you did. And tune in next time when we will be playing Nancy Drew, The Captive Curse, which was suggested by Luke Randall.